Hey, what is up guys? Recently, I did a sale on my coaching and uh, I've noticed that there's a few trends, common trends from 2K MMR to 5K MMR. These are mistakes, the five most common mistakes from 2K to 5K. And honestly, it's almost mind blowing how much overlap there actually is. And I know people don't wanna hear that. They wanna say, oh, it's my teammates. So oh, there's so many random variables. Dota is way too hard to improve at. I'm hard stuck because blah, 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 blah. But these are five things where you're probably making these mistakes almost every single game, if not every single game. All right, starting off at number one, we have Sieging Tier 2 and Tier 3 Towers. If you guys pull up any, and I mean any game, from like 2 to 5k MMR, one team will get a lead and they will proceed to Siege the nearest Tier 2. The enemy team is so used to this happening that they will sit there and wait for you to push the tower. The losing team waits, the winning team goes to the tower and sieges. Most of the time, the team, even though they're losing, that is defending the tower, wins the fight because tier two towers do damage. When they get glyphed, they have multi-shot, they give bonus armor. You are likely to be able to five man focus the person who is sieging without showing your backline heroes immediately. Everything is going well for the enemy team who is losing the game. And yet you siege, you siege, you siege. Guys, stop. If you want to gain MMR, it's simple. Until you have a massive lead and Aegis or the enemy team is just not in the area, don't go for tier twos and don't go for tier threes. I can't stress how bad it is to siege when you're not ready. All of the factors of a good fight are in the favor of the enemy team and you have complete map control. Why in the world does everyone want to siege? I don't get it. The tower takes like a minute and a half to kill unless you have specific heroes. Guys, that is a ton of farm and you're taking the biggest risk in the game. It's just painful to watch every game. It's just back and forth throws, swings and swings and swings. That's why the game average game time is the longer, the lower MMR you go because people just throw on these towers. All right, getting into number two, it's taking too long to ship items. This is a really cool one, I think, because a lot of people are completely unaware of this as a problem. So let me make it very clear to you. Basically, when you get enough gold, and we're mainly talking about the laning stage, but this applies to every stage of the game, mid game and late game as well, but primarily in the laning stage. If you're playing core, you're playing Lifestealer. This is an example I recently just worked on. You're playing Lifestealer, okay? And you have 700 gold. That 700 gold in your inventory should have already been a Bracer. It could have been Tango's. It could have been a Blades of Attack. But instead, what a lot of people do is they just forget to shift queue items or they shift queue items and they forget to buy them. I don't know exactly why this happens. I think people just don't really understand the importance of buying items right away. But if you complete a Bracer, that's it. This extra two damage and a little bit of regen can make all of the difference. It can, it can be the difference between getting a kill or not because it often comes down to the wire guys. Like a lot of the times in the laning stage, you're barely edging out the kill, you're barely winning the fight or losing the fight. And so if you have slight advantages from completing that bracer, shipping out the blades of attack and getting your item 10 to 20 to 30 seconds faster than the opponent, you are having a massive edge strictly based on just buying your items immediately when you get enough gold and shipping out a smaller portion of your items. People will wait to have the Bracer recipe, Gloves of Haste, and an Orb of Venom before shipping them out. Guys, if you wanna get good, I assure you watch any bro, they're gonna ship out component, tangos, component, nothing else. Component, tangos, and then a minute later, another Bracer. Something like this, guys. You'll see so many items being shipped out constantly for all high MMR games. Okay, getting into number three, it's not holding a TP. I think this mainly applies to carry players who want to split push. I just happen to coach the most carries. I don't know if for some reason carry players are like more motivated. No offense to everyone else. Maybe that's not true. I don't I don't exactly. It's just weird. Okay, getting into it. <laughs> it's not holding a TP. So in Dota, the main thing that swings gold, like that's going to impact the net worth of the game is team fights and fights and kills. Uh, as much as you'd love to split push to victory, it's very hard to do that in Loma Mar because fights are constantly happening and people have no fight discipline. Uh, and as a result, if you kind of miss team fights, someone's going to get upset and the game is going to swing in terms of gold. Now, this doesn't mean you should join every team fight because if you're playing something like Luna and you have four points in Moonglaze and four points in Lunar Blessing, 
you should be hitting the damn ancients, right? Go to hit those ancients. Okay, go hit the ancients. However, once you've hit your timing, maybe you have your BKB. If you are split pushing and you don't have TP because you used a TP a minute ago to farm or a TP a minute and a half ago to fight, you're griefing the game. You're especially griefing the game the lower MMR you go because people will take fights in stupid areas at stupid locations with the number of disadvantage all the time. It happens in all brackets all the way up to 13k MMR. However, it happens more and more the lower you go. You gotta be fight ready. When you hit your timing, you can't not have a TP. You can't not just show up to a fight if it looks decent. If the fight looks decent, you should be there. It is too important in Dota to swing fights uh, in the game, unless you're playing like Alk. Even then, the good Alks, when they hit Blink Radiance, they're joining the fights they understand how important it is for team morale and just overall gold swings. Getting into the fourth one, this one's kind of general, but uh, it's whack-ass items. Some of you guys just buy the worst shit. I, I don't know how you come up with this stuff. I don't know why y'all are trying to innovate. No, I understand it. It's one of the most fun things in Dota. I love it too. I love loading into a game and trying to come up with some really interesting theory on why I should buy a basher this game. Why maybe drums on Kunkka could be interesting. Why maybe Blademail Zeus with Eternal Shroud is the new way to play a frontline hero? I love it too, don't get me wrong. It's my favorite part of the game in a lot of ways outside of, I don't know, drafting, I suppose. I love drafting as well. But whack items, guys, until you have an extreme amount of Dota knowledge, is probably just going to grief you. Now, I know a lot of people don't like hearing that, and they're going to think, especially on their specialty heroes, they should be innovating their build every single game. But for the most part, for the majority, I can't stress enough how much I recommend going on Dota 2 Pro Tracker and sticking to the builds. If Sanjin Yasha is the broken item, you should probably be playing heroes and going Sanjin Yasha on different carry heroes. Radiance is good, maybe you should be playing and trying Brewmaster if you got some experience on the hero and running up the Radiance Brew, right? Maybe um, Mech and Greaves are good on support right now. You should probably be buying that item. Instead of buying an Axe or buying an, an Aether Lens on a hero that doesn't even really need it, like Rubik, you can buy a useful item, like Glimmer or a Greaves, or Vessel. Like, there's just so many situations where the builds are just off, and if you want to gain a MMR, to put it simply, go on Pro Tracker, copy the builds, and you're gonna be vibing. All right, getting into number five is awful farming rotations. Now, this is tough, because farming rotations is a very difficult concept in Dota. I mean, there are so many different paths you can take, and it really depends on where the enemy team is, right? Optimal is not really an option in Dota a lot of the time because Optimal will frequently get you killed. Sure, taking the, the creep wave between the enemy tier 1 and tier 2 tower into their ancient camps is probably the best way to get the most possible gold, but you're going to feed your unstoppable streak, so maybe we shouldn't do that. However, what I'm mostly referring to is just general neutral creeps in between fights, and that's about it. I really think people don't realize how bad they are and how much time they just waste in between fights. When the fight is over, guys, or nothing's happening, or it's just not your time to fight, maybe you're playing Kunkka and you're like one component off Axe, just take neutral camp, neutral camp, creep wave. Farm towards a creep wave. Farm the neutral camps towards a creep wave. This is the concept. The lane creeps are number one in Dota. They give the most gold for the majority of Dota heroes. Farm neutrals towards a lane and rinse repeat. When you've cleared that wave, back to the neutrals, look for the nearest creep wave. If it's being taken, probably go back to the other one that you were just farming or probably just go back to the wave you were already just farming or i don't know tp in, in some cases obviously be careful about that tping for farm tp for lane creeps while it is often the best way to get the most possible gold can make your team's position on the map very weak right you might crumble your entire map control so obviously be careful about that but just be aware of how much time you're wasting in between engagements especially in the early to mid game when you know you're completing a major item Guys, don't get distracted with just random shit going on. Like, don't get tilted at your teammate for taking a wave or taking your camp or maybe someone's farming in, in a place you think they shouldn't be. Just leave it alone. Go do your thing and be efficient. It's going to get you to the next rank. And all right, that's going to be all for today's video. Hopefully some of these ideas can stick with you. I'm going to repeat them quick here. Sieging tier two and tier three towers. Big mistake. Taking too long to ship items. Big mistake. Not holding a TP. Big mistake. Whack ass items. A big mistake. And awful farming rotations whether or not you're tilted or just they're wrong is a big mistake. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.